is what God does. With that said, um, I'm Brother Troy. Today, my reader will be Brother Robert, and we will start with the reading of the law. So if we could, if we all turn to Exodus, the 20th chapter, we'll start with the reading of the law. When you get it, go ahead, brother. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. All right. So now let's go to Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. We're going to read the whole duty of man. Pick it up at verse 13, if you would, brother. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall, ev shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. All right, so Solomon say that's the whole conclusion of the entire matter. Keep God's commandments. All right, let's go to our last place. Revelation, the 22nd chapter, and we'll read <laughs> verses 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they might have right to the tree of life, mm -hmm. and may enter in through the gates into the city. Mm -hmm. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. All right, so once again, as always, we like to stay in the habit of reading the law each and every week to keep it at the forefront of our minds. So with that said, um, once again, happy Sabbath. Um, as always, I want to start with, uh, can I get a show of hands of how many people know or have heard of the following rappers? Lil Wayne. Young Thug, NBA Young Boy. Why y'all laugh? <laughs> I know some of the older folks sitting there looking puzzled. So what about Tupac? B.I.G. Notorious B.I.G. I know some of you are probably sitting there thinking, why is Pastor Troy naming off all these people in his lesson? Well, first, you know, um, our young people today, and even some of the older people, are being bombarded with foolish behavior and fleshly thinking, whether it's through music or lifestyle. See, this behavior 
it's the way of thinking and it's being perpetrated by some of the people I named, right? Whether they're still alive or they've already passed. But it's not fair just to put all this on the rappers and their music. You know, not every, not every lesson or everything that we see can be blamed on them. You know, it's everything that we see on TV, the news. The bottom line is, it's a lot of wisdom being lacked in the world. And it's destroying a lot of our young people lives. You know, and making even fools out of some of the older people. You know, marriages are being destroyed. Friendships being lost. And at the end of the day, eternal life is at stake. People, eternal life is at risk. So here's the question. So how do we as parents, teachers, mentors, church leaders, equip our young generation with wisdom to make the right choice? You know, through their later teens and early years, how can we guide them in right understanding of wisdom? See, because the answer is, is, is quite clear. You know, Ephesians, the fifth chapter, instructs us that the walk of a Christian is to be in wisdom, you know, as we go through this life. So because that the time is speeding up, you know, this Bible speaks of not only darkness, but people being in gross darkness. We must make the best of our time. You know, too many of us are wasting both our time and our lives, you know, following people that at the end of the day, they're unhappy and they're unsure of the next move that they're making. So I decided we'll take a look today at the difference between godly wisdom and the way the world thinks. The wisdom, we, we, we'll separate both wisdom from foolish behavior. And my hope today is that, you know, I lead everyone, especially the young people, and understanding what God's word says about every decision that you make in life. Every decision that you make has an impact on your life. I know sometimes you don't want to look at that. Sometimes you may look at it as it's just minor, but there's a cause and an effect to everything. So with today, the name of the lesson is Wise Up in the Book of Proverbs. And as always, I'll give you a brief overview of what I'll be covering. First, I want to start with some definition. I'll be defining and looking at some of the values of wisdom. Next, we'll learn how to wise up by using discernment and discretion. And last but not least, I'll, I'll round it all off by looking at the fear of the Lord. You know, is it being esteemed? You know, are we showing respect? Are we applying God's word to our daily lives so we can obtain this wisdom. So I first want to start off with some definitions, if we could. Because as we cover some of these uh, proverbs today, it's always great to know exactly what a proverb is, right? So if you would, brother, read the definition of a proverb. If you would. Proverb, a short, pithy, precisely meaningful, forceful, forceful and brief saying, infrequent and widespread use that expresses a basic truth or practical precept. All right, a basic truth or practical precept. I like to sum it up by saying Proverbs takes practical things and put them into biblical perspective, the mind of God. You know, Proverbs also is uh, summarized as, as, as wisdom literature. It is intended to help readers envision, especially young, 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 young persons, to start outlining their life and to pursue sensible choices, right? So next, uh, let's go into uh, John, the 17th chapter. I want to start in John the 17th chapter before we read any more definition. Because they told us that Proverbs was a, 
with the truth, somewhat truth saying. But I always like to ask, you know, because everyone claims to, to know the truth, right? You got Buddhists, you got Hindu, you got Muslims, all claim to have the truth. But I'd like to start here in John, the 17th chapter, and just build a little foundation before we truly get started into these Proverbs. John 17, pick it up at verse 17. Go ahead, brother. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So the, the word of God encourages us to, it says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So in order to be set apart, in order to be sanctified, it has to be through the word of God. See, this is how we determine what the true Sabbath day is, right? It's only through not what he says, not what I says, not what your friend or your neighbor says, but it's according to the word of God. That's what truth is. So with that said, let's go to Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. I know we were there earlier because I also want to put emphasis on, even though Solomon wrote the book of Proverbs, and even when your brother and sister come to you with a fit word, we have to stop looking at the words that are being spoken as just words of, 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 of mere men or teachers or leaders, you know, that have some uh, uh, influencing words that they're giving you. These are the words of God. This is what he would have me, you, to instruct, I mean, a, a, a pattern of how to instruct our lives. Because if he has put us on this journey, right, there's a path in which he would have us take. Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, and when I get there, we're going to pick it up at verse 8. Ecclesiastes. 12 and pick it up at verse 8. Go ahead, brother. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. Right, so Solomon, who wrote Ecclesiastes, he's saying vanity of vanities. See, this is the knowledge that he came into. No matter what he would uh, accumulate in his life, you know, he said he had women singers, male singers. You know, his fame was throughout the world. But he, at the end of the day, what he found is it was all vanity. It profited nothing. But go ahead. All is vanity. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Right. But what is knowledge? I'm here to tell you that knowledge is truth. So just like how we come here and we all sit up under a preacher and we being taught the word of God, the word of truth, every man. Every woman has to be taught, right? Go ahead. Yea, he gave good heed and sought and set in order many proverbs. Mm -hmm. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. Right, so if I'm going to be a brother to my brother, a brother to my sister, I have to find out what truly pleases God. Because the Lord tell us, lean on one another. That iron sharpening iron. So when, that, when my brother, who I call my brother, come to me, I have to be able to not only give him uh, things that he need for that day, but the things that he need to carry on to obtain eternal life. Because that's the end goal. But continue to read, brother. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. The words of the wise are as goads and as nails fastened by the masses of assemblies, which are given for one, from one shepherd. And right. And that one shepherd is Christ. Right. This is who we get our interpretation from. Not a, not one, not two, not three, not five different teachers. You know, because you got people that say I'm spiritual. I just gleam a little bit from here and there and I put it all together. But that's not how we operate. We, we get all of our interpretation, all of our word of God from one shepherd. And that shepherd is Christ. See, because every man you know, has an, uh, uh, an idea of what he think is right in his own mind. And we tried that route, right? When God placed it in our hand, you know, even though we look back at our forefathers, it was our forefathers 
who chose Saul, right? But the whole time we had the true and living God as our king. It was our forefathers who decided, you know what? Even though God chose Moses, you know what? Let's prop, you know, Korah, uh, Dathan, or Byram, you know. We know God chose Moses, but we want a new leader. See, God is not looking for us. He doesn't want our thinking. A lot of times he takes that out of our hand. That's why he tells us, Lean toward the word because it is what's true. It's not what it's not my opinion. It's not what some man's opinion. It's all about the word of God. That's what we're gonna bring out today. So uh, continue to read. No, I'm, I'm sorry, we're there. We're finished with that. Yes. So let's get into um, these proverbs. All right? Let's go to um, Second Corinthians. I mean, Second Chronicles, the first chapter. First. I said 2 Chronicles, the first chapter, right? Okay, I said right that time. <laughs> All right, keep, keep me straight. 2 Chronicles, the first chapter. Because Solomon is credited with writing the book of Proverbs. But we're going to see where he got this great wisdom from. Second Chronicles. First chapter. Let's pick it up at verse 6, if you would. Go ahead, brother. And so at this point, Solomon has taken over for his father, David, King David. And everything in the kingdom is going well. And this is where we'll pick the story up, starting at verse 6, as soon as we get some batteries. Bring, bring me some just in case mine go down. Verse 6. All right. Go ahead. And Solomon went up thither to the, to the brazen altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of the congregation, mm -hmm. and offered a thousand burnt offerings upon it. And that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. Right. So here it is. The Lord has appeared to Solomon and gave him an open checkbook. What is it that you desire, Solomon? I'm here to grant it. Let's listen to King Solomon. Go ahead. Verse 8. And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father, and hast made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established, for thou hast made me king over a, over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Mm -hmm. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this, this thy people that is so great? Right. So here it is. Solomon has an open checkbook. And the first thing he asked the Lord is, first of all, he thanked the Lord. You have placed me over your people. Now, God, all I want is the wisdom to be able to govern them. I would dare ask anybody to raise their hand in this room who would have took, took this approach. Because I don't want this but to be what stopped you from getting into the kingdom. <laughs> but listen at God's response. Go ahead. And God said to Solomon, because this was in thine heart, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thine enemies. Neither, has, neither yet has asked long life, 
but has asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself that thou mayest judge my people over whom I make Wisdom and knowledge is, great un is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither shall there any, any th after thee have, have the light. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so once again, Solomon had the mind to ask for wisdom, and God saw fit to bless him with riches, wealth, and honor. See, these are the things that we have to enlighten our, our, our youth about, our, king, our, our children about. You know, when we talk about excellence, right, this is what you share with your child. This is our ancestors. This is your history, right, that we got to get back to this point till we're no longer being selfish. It's not about me and it's not about me shining. Is how can I help God's people? How can I help build this nation? How can I help right all this wrong that's out here? Because a lot of the times, we say it all the time, people, some people are just operating in ignorance. Not everybody out there knows the will of God. Now, some people know it and choose, but we don't, we're not necessarily concentrating on those. Let's go to 1 Kings, the fourth chapter. Because I want to show you some of the things that Solomon did with all this wealth and knowledge and honor that God bestowed upon him. First Kings, the fourth chapter. Because a lot of times, you know, we'll be fine until the Lord bless us, right? Lord bless you, before the Lord had blessed you, you were walking in the way. He saw fit to bless you a little bit, but just like anything else, how big you said, more money, more problems, right? Some things, some things you can't offend because you don't have the money to. But let's watch uh, King Solomon and how he operated once God blessed him with all this wisdom. 1 Kings 4, pick it up at verse 29 if you would, brother. I'm sorry, 29. 1 Kings 4 and verse 29. Go ahead and read. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart, mm -hmm. even as the sand that is on the seashore. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men. So when the Lord bless you, it is without measure. Mm -hmm. He said he was wiser than all men. Go ahead. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan the Ezraite, and Heman, and, and Chalcol, and Darda the sons of Mahol. And his fame was in all nations round about. And he spake 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were 1,005. So with some of that wisdom... Solomon sought to write 3,000 proverbs and 1,005 songs. Now, not all of them are in the book that we have today, but that's what he chose to use the wisdom that God granted him to do, but for a purpose. Because what did he tell God? Give me this wisdom so I can rule over your people. I, I, I want to do this right, God. Just endow me that I can be a righteous judge, that I can be a righteous king. Right? So let's look at what some of what he gave the people. Let's continue to read. Uh, let's go to, to Proverbs, the first chapter. You want to finish that? I didn't finish it. Go ahead. Verse 33. And he spake of trees from the cedar that is in Lebanon, even unto the hyssop that springeth out of the wall. Mm -hmm. He spake also of beasts and of fowl and of creeping things, and of fish, 
And there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all kings of the earth which had heard of his wisdom. Right, so his wisdom was world-renowned. People was coming from all over the world to hear the wisdom of Solomon, right? So let us hear some of what God gave him and that he would put in place to rule over the people. Let's go to Proverbs, the first chapter. And you can stick a marker in Proverbs. And before we get started, I want to define some words because all throughout the book of Proverbs, the common theme is knowledge, understanding, wisdom. So I want to take time out and define those three. We'll first start with knowledge. Sounds like good. Uh, one more. One more. There you go. All right. Knowledge. Go ahead, brother. Knowledge. The state or fact of knowing. Familiarity, awareness, or understanding gained through experience or study. So knowledge is merely just understanding gained through experience or study in layman's terms. Go ahead. The sum or range of what has been perceived, discovered, or learned. Mm -hmm. Understanding, to become aware of the nature, significance, and intended meaning of something, to know or comprehend, to know thoroughly by close contact or long experience. So, in, in short, understanding is merely just to know or to comprehend. You know, once some knowledge is there and you fully comprehend it, that's understanding. Go ahead. Wisdom. 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 The ability to discern or judge what is true. Right, insight, common sense, good judgment. The sum of learning through the ages equals knowledge. All right. So once again, that wisdom is the ability to discern or judge what is true, right, and insight. Common sense, good judgment, the sum of learning through the ages equals knowledge, in short. So I wanted to, uh, before... Still, before we get started into Proverbs 1, I want to put it really in layman's terms. See, knowledge can be summed up like this. Knowledge is knowing how to use a gun. Understanding is, can be summed up in knowing what the gun can be used to either do or what it's for. Wisdom is knowing when to use it and when to keep it in your house. Knowledge is, once again, gathered over times, like when you study, you study the commandments, right? Wisdom is putting it through the application of it, living it, right? Knowledge understands that when the light turns red at a traffic intersection, you stop. Wisdom is knowing to apply the brakes, right? So you can have knowledge and not have wisdom, right? But if you have wisdom, you've acquired knowledge. It's just over time you, you place, you, you either uh, trial and error. Because see, there, there, are, there are, and I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go to Proverbs, the first chapter. Don't want to get ahead of myself. Proverbs 1, and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, mm -hmm. to whom wisdom and instruction to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. Right. So once again, Solomon is saying, you know, these Proverbs are to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. See, because you have to perceive something first in your mind, and then you're able to manifest it. All right? Pick it up at uh, three one more time. To receive the instruction of wisdom, 
justice and judgment and equity, mm -hmm. to give subtly to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. Right, so he's saying these proverbs that he wrote, you know, one of the objectives that he wanted to accomplish, of course, he wanted to share this with, he wanted to give instructions, but he also wanted to give uh, subtlety, which is, you know, just wisdom to the simple, right? And he says also to the young man, knowledge and discretion. See, this, this, this knowledge and, and this discretion that he wants to give this young man because a young man hasn't lived life. He's still inexperienced in so many uh, areas of his life, he lacks discretion. Which, once we read the definition of wisdom, we see that comes through experience, right? So with that said, let's go to, uh, let's go to Proverbs, the fourth chapter. See, because wisdom can come from two sources, either trial and error or counsel from other people. And sometimes trial and error, you know, once again, that's just your personal experiences. You may not figure it out the first time you, you, sought out, you, you sought out to do something, but along the line, you just kind of figured it out. But a lot of times, you can waste a lot of time. But the second part of that is counseling from other people. They may have already been there, done that. So if you will have the ear to hear and some dis discernment, you can say, well, you know what? I never thought about that. I'm going I'm to I'm try that. And if it works, you just save yourself a whole lot of time and effort, right? So let's go to Proverbs, the fourth chapter, and let's build up on this wisdom. Proverbs 4. And pick it up at verse 5. Go ahead. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Mm -hmm. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Mm -hmm. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. So the, the scripture telling us that wisdom is a principal thing. See, it's, it's, it's primary. It's, it's essential. It's the number one thing that you want to gain. See, because Ecclesiastes tells us also that wisdom is a defense, money is a defense, but the excellence of knowledge uh, gives life unto them that have it. See, wisdom can ex help extend your life because you know how to navigate through life. And if you look at the world as it is today, a lot of our youth, they're, they're dying so young do you know they have a slogan now, the, the good die young? No. No. The young that are lacking wisdom die young. Because if you got wisdom, you can live to be an old man by just making wise choices. See, wisdom can help you because you can have money in the bank, but without wisdom, you're subject to lose it. You know, you can have fame, but without wisdom, right, it'll ruin you. How many times have you seen somebody on top and they make, I would like, well, let's call his name, Will Smith. Who was, you know, there are, there are only few actors. You know, they call it the, the, the $20 million, you know, actors. And for a long time, there were only a few. Don't even call me if you don't have $20 million. Right? And he was a part of that. But look how one decision, one decision he made has altered his entire life. And that's just for the world to see. But we are, as individuals, you know that we made choices that we look back upon that if we had the wisdom if we had the knowledge and the understanding of God's word, we wouldn't have made that, that choice. Right? Go ahead, brother. Continue to read. I 
finish that. Mm -hmm. Oh, you finish that? Let's go to Proverbs, the third chapter. So I want to show you something else about this wisdom. Obtaining and gaining this wisdom. Proverbs 3. Pick it up at verse 13. When you get it, go ahead and read, brother. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. Right. And he should be happy. Once you found this wisdom, because the scripture was telling us that it's the principal thing. It's the primary thing. This is what you should be seeking each and every time you pick up this book. The wisdom, the words of God. But go ahead, brother. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. She is a what? A tree of life. So wisdom is a tree of life. And who is the tree of life? Jesus. But that's what God's telling us, right? If you find wisdom, you just found God. See, because the wealth of the earth, you know, that's why he says more precious than ruby. Because the wealth of the earth and the knowledge that we come here and receive, right? Sometimes I know we, 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 we fall into a rut and we, and we, we look at things, but, but the knowledge that you get here, the access to the tree of life is worth more than any gold in the world. And I know sometimes we don't view it that way. But once you found the truth, once you found the way to the tree of life, you can't put a price on that. Because with that comes the understanding that if you do this thing right, you can inherit being God. This wisdom right here, I know when Solomon was speaking to the people, First of all, he's the king, so he got that undivided attention. Who's going to be talking while the king's talking? But these words that he's trying to edify to the people, if they would just receive it, he was giving them the blueprint to obtain eternal life. But continue to read, Robert. 18. She is a tree of light to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. The Lord by wisdom have founded the earth. So the Lord by his infinite wisdom, this is how he found, founded the earth. So if God has wisdom, if God uses wisdom, who are we not to be trying to glean and obtain more? Because one day we so desire to be God. And we say it all the time, once you God, just, just as God came out and he, he told the Father, give me back the powers I had with you before the world was, all power. Think, our mind can't phantom all power. You want to create another civilization, boom, go ahead. You want to live on another planet, you want to populate it, you God, go ahead. All power. Pick it back up at 19 once again, brother. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. Amen. So once again, let's go to Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. Because here in Proverbs, the third chapter, Solomon compared wisdom to the tree of life. Here in Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, there's also going to be a comparison. Wisdom is going to be compared to, or going to be synonymous with something else. Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, and once again, this is the Lord speaking to the children of Israel. Peter, chapter four, verse one. 
Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Now, therefore, hearken, O Israel, mm -hmm. unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. So the Lord is telling them, first of all, I'm going to teach you these things. But then once I teach you to it, once you have this understanding, once you have this knowledge of it, then I want you to go do it. Because it's not enough just to know the commandments, right? You got to do it. Continue to read, Robert. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye, may be, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Right, he's he letting them know right off the bat, don't be adding to my word. What I wrote, I wrote. What I spoke, I spoke. Don't add to. Because that's, that's, that's one problem that we as a people, we all, I, I, I sometimes marvel at people who have their own version of the Bible. You know, I, I think sometimes people figure just because they're a pastor, they have the, 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 you know, the right and the authority to produce their own Bible. What? Sidebar, rabbit hole, come back to the word. Verse 5, brother, go ahead. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, mm -hmm. that ye should do so in the land whether ye go to possess it. So you see this? You know, even the Lord, he was commanded to do things. He's like, just like I have to follow through the things I'm giving you guys, I want you guys to follow through with it. But continue to read. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. Go we, shall, we shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So the Lord is telling Israel, these commandments I'm giving you, that I, that I spoke to you, that I'm teaching you, that I'm telling you to go do, this is your wisdom among the nations. This is what's going to make you wise. When the people see you operating in the commandments, this is when they're going to say, this is a wise and understanding people. Through the commandments. And I know a lot of times, you know, people, that's one of those words here. It's like, oh, the commandments again. But at the end of the day, that's, that, that's where the game is won. If you can keep the commandments, you can obtain eternal life. It's truly just that simple. You know, we always go back to, to Matthew 19. There was only one question asked. What must I do to obtain eternal life? Jesus said, keep the commandment. Jesus was done. He picked back up the conversation. God was done with it. Keep the commandment. The Lord was saying, this is the wisdom I want you guys to go forth with. These other nations... Serving these pagan gods, when you get among them, don't take up on their gods. Don't learn their ways. Once they see you shutting down, observing the Sabbath day, curiosity going to kill the cat. Hey, what are y'all doing? Why are y'all doing this? Hey, this is how we honor our God. We work. We rest. On, on, on the first day, we renew. This is wisdom, Right? But this is what God would have us to go forth with. All right? Did we, uh, we finish that? Yes. Let's go, to, uh, let's go to Psalms 119 chapter. Because one of the objectives in, in Proverbs 1, once again, Solomon said that he wanted to give subtlety, which is wisdom, to the simple. Right? Which is just a person that, you know, maybe they're a little naive. And knowledge to the young men. So let's hear from his father, David. Because to the young men, if you're going to be married, if you're going to lead a household, you're going to need some wisdom. You're going to need some knowledge. You're going to need some understanding. Right? The husband and the wife. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about Proverbs 24. It says, through wisdom is a house built. But by understanding, is it established? See, because when you put two young people together, I tell you right now, they're going to be jockeying for positions. Especially a young man. I'm the head of the house. 
God put me the head of this household. Been there, done that. <laughs> but for sisters wise, that's when she can read Ephesians, the fifth chapter. The Lord says, submit yourselves one to another in the fear of God. See, men, sometimes we have to humble down. Mm. Men don't want to hear that. What? We ain't always right. You know? And especially if she coming with the word of God, if you take heed to it, that's why I know Paul wrote it just like that. He says, submit yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Because sometimes you won't do it for yourself, but guess what? Not to offend God, you'll humble down. Especially when you're wrong, right? But let's go to Psalms 119. Because when David was talking to Solomon, he told him, he said, listen, show yourself a man. How? By how? By keeping of the commandments. Psalm 119, and as soon as I get there, we're going to pick it up. Psalm 119. The absolute longest psalm in the Bible. Psalm 118, pick it up at verse 9. Go ahead. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. So the question was asked, wherewith all shall a young man cleanse his ways? Because once again, a young man's lacking discretion. So maybe he was in the word, but he fell out of it. He needed to clean himself up. Or maybe he never had it at all. And he wants to start walking in newness of life. How should he clean himself up? Listen to what the word tells us. Go ahead. By taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandment. So it all come all the way back to the word of God. Young man, you want to clean yourself up? Only through the commandments. Only through the word of God can it be done. Right? So... Just like we train our minds up to obtain degrees, to obtain promotions on job, David's telling Solomon this exact same thing. Right? You want to gird yourself up? It can only be done through the word of God. It can only be done through the commandments. That's how, as a young man, you can rightfully be the head of your household. That's how, as a young man, you can submit to your wife when she is coming with the word of God and you may not be seeing something straight, only through the word of God, right? Because if you're looking at her as just uh, a woman that God has placed you over, you won't have that humility, all right? Let's go to uh, Proverbs, the seventh chapter. Because God's going to give, uh, here in the seventh proverb Solomon is going to give the young men a warning probably a warning later on in life he probably wished he would have took heed to because Solomon he did the thing for a long time right and it wasn't until the end of his life to where he was on that slope he was right there on the edge right and he made some, some choices that he shouldn't have. He let the women that he put their needs and their wants above the word of God. But look at this warning here in Proverbs, the seventh chapter. And all the young men at some time, right, and even old men, you know, once again, Solomon said, he, he definitely was, was writing this to the young men to give them discernment, but some old men could take, take heed to this also. Proverbs 7, let's pick it up at verse 7. Go ahead. And beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths, a young man void of understanding. So the first thing that jumped out to me right here is that this young man, right, he's young. He's simple, 
and he's void of understanding. Look at that. Right there, I mean, just out the gate. Lacking discretion. But go ahead. Passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. Mm -hmm. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Oh, so here it is. She loud. She's stubborn. But to the young man, all he saw was what he seen with his eyes. Scripture says she had on that harlot a tire and was subtle of heart. See, she wise. And she knows that she dealing with a, with a young man who's simple, void of understanding. Go ahead and continue to read, brother. Verse 12. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an imp imp impudent face said unto him. So let me define that impotent face, right? It says that that means cocky, boldness, disregard of others, lacking modesty. So she could care less. Lacking modesty, cocky, boldness, disregard for others. Go ahead, read, pick that one up, uh, 13, one more time. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the good man is not at home. He has gone a long journey. Ooh, so hey. <laughs> the young man should have heard, like, if he heard nothing else, right? <laughs> at this point, it should be some red lights flashing. Woo, woo, warning, warning, warning. Right? Because it was all good, right? She was talking that talk. She said, hey, the bed's ready. It's all draped. I got them thousand count sheets on there. Got the AC blowing. It's cold up in there. I done already cooked. <laughs> Window open, that, that chicken smell just coming out of there. <laughs> the young man thinking, this is what I've been looking for. <laughs> this is your place? Don't nobody else think? But go ahead, brother. Let's get back to the story. Go for ahead. the good man is not at home. He is gone a long journey. He has taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. Man, she's sweet in the pot, right? She said he done took a bag of money. <laughs> he ain't going to be back no time soon. It's just me and you. Go ahead. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter or as a fool to the correction of the stocks till a dart strike through his liver as a bird hasted to the snare and knoweth not that it is for his life. Right, because once again, remember in James, the Lord said you can only be drawn away by your own what? Lust. Right? So you ought to have this desire in you from the start. Right? Or she can just be talking all she wants to. But a young man lacking discretion, right? This is what he's been looking for. How long he going to be gone? How much money he took? You sure you know where he at? Right? We got to do this here? He can ask none of those questions. Right? But go ahead, brother. 24. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths. For she hath cast down many wounded, yea, Many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Right. Her house is a direct path to the lake of fire. 
But to a young man without discretion, and even an old man without discretion, because the first thing he should have thought about is, and I'm going to quote it. This is uh, Proverbs 6. He said, but whosoever committed adultery with a woman, lack of understanding, he doeth it, destroyeth his own soul. And he better hope that the, the man of the house don't come home. Because any man will tell you, you know, trust me, I, we lived enough life. There's, you watched enough TV. There's a difference between you catching your girlfriend cheating with somebody. You still may be upset. Then you coming home and another man being with your wife. And even the law looks at it different. Right? You can't kill some boyfriend that was at, at her house. But let another man be in your house, right? And you kill him. You stand a pretty good chance of getting out. Because they because even men understand that rage that a man feels about his wife. And same thing with a woman. That time, there's no money that can be offered. She want blood. That woman can stop and say, listen, wait. I got $30,000 in the car. I'll be right back with it if you don't harm me. So they're going to say, you can keep that money. <laughs> what were you doing at my house? It's all about discretion. I know Solomon's writing to a young man, but this is to the old man, too. Quote Proverbs, the second chapter, it said, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. And that is the truth. That is the truth. Because it's, life is all about choices we make. And if you don't have any uh, discernment, this is where you can get it. Because, see, a lot of men, you know, it's twofold, right? Because it, it's one thing to have a man or a a, a, a a father or uncle who helped raise you, but what if he taught you poor things? What if he taught you, hey, listen, a man should have a girlfriend on the side. That just because he was a man, he was a male president there, was he, thinking, was he teaching you the things of God? And then you have just the opposite. You have men who, who grew up without a male figure in their life. And sometimes they resent that. They say, you know what? I just don't know sometimes, I'm put in certain situations, I just don't know if I'm making the right decision. And which is fair, right? Which is fair, but God has given wisdom to Solomon to put into these Proverbs that to where even the man who lacks, who is simple, who is naive, can gain wisdom to live throughout his day-to-day -day life. That's all these, these Psalms and Proverbs are. Psalms teach you really how to please your God. These, these Proverbs, how to get along with your fellow man. In a nutshell, you know. A, a lot, sometimes at work, not so much now, because um, I'm pretty much the only one in the office, but <laughs> times past, we would have groups, we would just, whatever the date was, we would pick either Proverbs or Psalms, and that's what, kind of what we would discuss that day. And it was really fruitful because you'll be surprised. The thing that God spoke to you about in that, in that Psalm or that Proverbs, you go to ask uh, someone who joined the group to decided to share, say, hey, man, you read Proverbs 2. What did you get out of it? And they may expound on something. You're like, did you read Proverbs 2? You didn't get that because God... You know, that ain't, that's not the message that he was speaking to you on that day. But what's for you is for you. That's why we constantly go back over and we read these scriptures, and that's why you always gain something new every time that you read it, right? But it's not fair for me just to uh, take a look at the discretion needed for the young men. I want to take a look at the women also. Let's go to Proverbs 11 chapter. Because me personally, this is destroy person, you know, I think that's the only thing worse than seeing a man without discretion and seeing a woman without discretion. Yeah, it's just my personal opinion. Proverbs 
Proverbs 11. Let's pick it up at verse 22. Go ahead, brother. As a jewel of gold in a swine's snout, so is a fair woman which is without discretion. Who? Solomon. Solomon was putting the pen to paper, wasn't he? So the jewel of gold and the fair woman are alike. But the swine's snout, and you notice he picked an unclean animal. The swine's snout and a woman without discretion are alike. See, the jewel of gold in the swine's nose is being devalued. It's being, think of a pig, a hog, a swine. It's playing in trash. It's playing in mud. So it's devalued, this golden ring. It's not serving its true purpose, right? So is a woman without discretion. So women, sometimes, you know, you have to use your words wisely. You have to watch your actions. You know, who am I speaking to and what am I saying about this person? Right? See, every thought that comes to mind doesn't have to be shared. You don't have to give a person every detail. This week I was reading uh, the book of Esther. And for those who don't know the story and those who know the story, um, of course, the king wanted his wife, Vashti, to come in, but she wouldn't come in. So the king, his men thought it would be a great idea. You know what? If you let her do that, all, all the men in the kingdom, their wife going to disrespect him. You should replace her. And so they had this pageant where they was going to replace her. And Esther, she, uh, she was one of those. And the guy, the king, the, 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 uh, the, the king's right-hand man who was prepping all the women, getting them ready to be presented before the king. He liked Esther, and Esther came in. Every, and her uncle was Mordecai. And every, every, every day, Mordecai would go in and check on Esther to see how she was doing. But Mordecai also gave Esther a bit of advice. He said, don't go in there and share that you know Jew. Don't go in there and share who your, your kin, your, who your family is. If they don't ask you that question, don't you give up that answer. Same thing with you ladies. You know, sometimes it's, it's okay to talk and share, but you don't have to give every single detail of your past. Right? Because what you think you're just sharing, right, people may take that and use it against you. People may take that and judge you. You know, you can come and say, well, you know, I used to have, um, uh, I used to be addicted to cocaine. Now, person talking in the, in the lobby, they see you over there by their purse. Oh, I, I need to get back over there. You, you know that sister used to smoke? Yeah, the sister say that was 20 years ago. Right? But that's using discretion. That's using discretion. And sometimes we lack that. Like I say, Solomon may have started out with the young men, but it's awful for, for the older men. It's also for the women. You don't have to share every single thought. Let's go to James, the third chapter. Thank you for joining us here at the Israel of God, Dallas. We look forward to seeing you again.